Well, I'm sure most of you have heard of CI/CD when it comes to DevOps. A lot of you, I'm sure, would have been implementing it as well. Now, what does the CD mean to you? Is it continuous delivery? Is it continuous deployment? And if you don't know the difference, this video is where I explain it. So let's get on with it. Now, before we get into the CD, let's first talk about the CI, the continuous integration part and the purpose of it. So it starts with a developer, let's say writing a new feature and let's say she checks in her feature code into the Git repository, a common Git repository, maybe to a feature branch. And from there, it gets merged into the master or the main line of the code. Typically, it is called as a main line today. Now, when that happens, you set up a process of uh, setting up a feedback like, you know, you check whether the application actually builds, whether it breaks the build. That's an important question uh, to answer and uh, whether it runs the unit test successfully or not. And that is a way to provide the instant continuous feedback to the developers, right, uh, to improve the quality of the code, etc. And that is the continuous integration part till this point, typically. Uh, and once you get the feedback, also part of the CI, also uh, a lot of times you add a packaging step where um, you take your application, build an artifact with it. If it is a container based uh, delivery, it's the container image, and then you publish it to the artifactory server, such as artifactory, you know, Sona type Nexus, and uh, let's say a container registry with containers. Now, what happens after that is uh, you could also extend this, you know, pipeline uh, you know, because this runs in a set of a sequence of jobs, which makes up a pipeline. And this is what continuous integration CI CD started with. And then uh, a lot of, you know, engineers thought that, you know, we could definitely extend this and use it to automate our deployment cycle as well. And what happens after you build an artifact and publish is you would want to deploy it to some environment, maybe a dev environment, uh, maybe a staging environment, maybe a UAT environment, maybe run some acceptance tests there, uh, maybe run some additional, uh, you know, type of tests, etc. And uh, ensure that it is stable enough uh, and working and maybe uh, test the UI features, uh, UAT and uh, all uh, those sort of uh, tests there. And then finally, you would want to promote that code to the development and you will have your uh, deployment uh, production and uh, there you have, you will have your uh, let's say deployment process to the production where you may stop some services, you may, you know, uh, start um, or deploy the version that you have, uh, the new version, maybe set up the load balancers and uh, DNS uh, systems and whatnot, and uh, restart the services if needed, and whatever it takes to deploy to production, that let's assume is a set of steps right, uh, right here. Now talking about CD part, the continuous delivery versus continuous deployment, uh, that is what I'm going to come to now is uh, most of the time with whether it is CD, uh, continuous delivery or continuous deployment, you would typically see, you know, after you run the CI, you would want to deploy it to the low, you know, to the environments like staging and UAT and run the acceptance test there. And after that, what happens? And based on that, you will pick I either of the continuous delivery or continuous deployment. In case of continuous delivery, you will have all these steps automated, everything here automated, uh, all the steps to deploy to production also automated, but you will have a switch when you want to make it available to the customers actually. And that switch is pressed by someone like a release manager uh, based on various you know, inputs, maybe you have uh, certain tests which are not completely automated. So you have your QA um, run those tests or maybe developers running those tests. Maybe you have a release cycle which happens every week. Uh, you communicate your customers accordingly or maybe it happens uh, at the end of the sprint every two weeks. So based on all those inputs and the strategies that you want to use, you would want to make the product or the feature available to the customer at that point of time. So someone presses a switch and only then it goes and gets enabled to the customers. Now, you could also do various variations of this as well. So sometimes you might have uh, this connected and every feature that comes out uh, of the CI and then gets uh, you know tested here goes to the production environment but does not get enabled to the customers. 
it only gets enabled at the time you um, want to release that product to the customers and you know that that could be done by a feature flag or something on those lines or maybe canary release and so on so there could be remember always uh, various variations of this and then with continuous deployment which is much difficult to achieve you could achieve that when you have this com connected and every single feature that you are you know uh, building and coming out of ci goes to the production right away and gets enabled to the customers and there are certain companies who do this like um, companies like google who have who you know keep uh, their features as beta a lot of those and uh, if you have a completely automated um, you know testing uh, it is possible to do that as well. So it depends on your strategy, the organization strategy, depending depends on how ready you are for the continuous uh, deployment. Continuous deployment is typically the tougher job and most of us are striving for the continuous delivery. So that is the difference between the continuous integration and the continuous delivery. Well, I hope that gives you some clarity. I would be curious to know whether you are implementing continuous delivery or whether it is that continuous deployment that you're striving for. And if you want to get started with your CICD journey, definitely check out my course on implementing CICD, which has been published by Linux Foundation, which is linked in the description below. I'll see you in the next one and do let me know what you would like to hear about next.